okay, non-proportional reinsurance or excess of loss reinsurance continuation from the last class. So if you can refer to this slide, it mentions that why insurer need to divide the cover of excess of loss into multiple layers or into many layers. So you have seen how many layers work. There could be one layer, it could be two layers, it could be three layers and so on. Why insurer is having many layers? The reason is to split the risk excess of loss cover into layers. These layers facilitate the placement of reinsurance cover because there is preference or specification in different levels of cover by different reinsurer in different reinsurance market. So the main reason why insurer divide their cover into many layers is to enable them to get cover because, because each reinsurer has different expertise. They prefer different types of cover. For example, some, some, some reinsurer prefer to pay lower claims or small claims. And some reinsurer prefer to pay high claims, catastrophic claims. Okay, for example, we have two layers here. The first layer, 800,000 in excess of 400,000. The second layer, or we call it the upper layer, has a cover of 1.5 million in excess of 1.2 million. So we can call this upper layer as catastrophic level because when there is a claim, if a claim hits this layer, they're going to be huge claim. That's why we call it catastrophic claims. However, even though it is catastrophic claims, the event of claims is not common or infrequent claim. It, it doesn't happen that, that frequent. It happens once in a while. And some reinsurer prefer to have this type of layer because they know that the claim is not common or it doesn't occur many times in a year. And some reinsurer prefer to, 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 to have or to protect a lower layer because lower layer will involve a lot of claim or higher, higher claims. Even though there are going to be a lot of claims in that one year which hit this layer, which is more than 400,000, if the claim is more than 400,000 up to 800,000, the first layer reinsurer will have to get involved. Even though there are going to be high claims, reinsurer is getting paid a higher excess of loss premium by the insurer. Why high, higher excess of loss premium? Because reinsurer will get involved many times in claim settlement since the cover is very small and the deductible is considered very small. So this layer will involve frequent claims but reinsurer will get higher, higher premium paid by the insurer and this layer involves uh, uncommon claims or infrequent claims. It doesn't happen that frequent but the premium or the excess of loss premium paid by the insurer is slightly lower. Okay, so they're going to be different, different preference. Some reinsurer prefer this type of layer. Some reinsurer prefer this type of layer. So by having different layers, that will make it easier for the insurer to place the cover in different market. Okay, so that answer the question why need to divide cover into many layers. Okay, uses of non-proportional treaty. When excess of loss is being used. First, excess of loss reinsurance or non-proportional reinsurance is commonly used to protect liability classes of business. Okay, why liability insurance? Why non-proportional is considered the best to protect liability insurance? Can you recall back the characteristic of liability insurance? How do you characterize, how you describe liability insurance? Okay, liability insurance is actually, you can describe it as long tail 
insurance because the claim is a long tail. Why it is, what is long tail? Long tail means that the time is taken for claim settlement gonna be many years. It's gonna be very long to settle a claim. If you can imagine a, a road accident, a claim for liability as a result of a road accident, a claim for liability insurance as a result of a defective product, a claim of liability insurance as a result of uh, negligence of, of a doctor. So in those cases, the claim settlement is not within one year. It's gonna it gonna take more than a year to settle this type of claim, and we call it long tail claims. And long tail claims, there are problems related to long tail claims, where the cost of claims will increase in the future. Because the medical cost in year twenty twenty might not be similar. For example, for medical cost in year two thousand. 24. So there's going to be increase of cost of this claim and this increase of cost is caused by what we call inflation. So what happened is in excess of loss there is a clause in the agreement which is called inflation clause. So this inflation clause will increase will increase both the deductible and cover. So let's say the cover is the excess of loss cover is in year 2020, but in year 2024, the exact cover is actually increased for certain percentage. Okay, increased by certain percentage. So what what I'm trying to say is, both the deductible. And both the cover in year 2020 will increase in the future. And this increment is to protect the increase in the cost of claims with regard to that claim. Okay? So that is why liability insurance is best to be reinsured using excess of loss. Okay. Can increase net retained premium and profit. So we know that. Uh, non-proportional treaty, they are not sharing, the insurer and the reinsurer are not sharing the original gross premium. So, by doing so, insurer is able to increase their net retained premium of the original premium. And this is possible if the insurance business is substantially profitable and the incident of small claim is low. If these two conditions are met, insurer might, might enjoy the advantage of the positive side of retaining more original gross premium. But if, let's say, incident of small claim is very, very frequent, it happens many times, whenever the small claim incurred, it's going to hit the level of deductible. So, insurer will have to pay or insurer will have to retain more claims under working excess of loss or under non-proportional reinsurance. So this will defeat the purpose of them to retain more original premium because they have to use this premium to pay the claim. But if the claim, small claim is very small, it doesn't happen many times, meaning that insurer is able to retain more original premium and at the same time not paying a lot of claims under the non-proportional reinsurance. Advantages of non-proportional. Number one, it is considered very simple when it comes to administration. Less costly when it comes to administration. Why, what's the, the logic of simplicity in administration when it, when it comes to non-proportional? First, you have to remember, you have to remember this many times that non-proportional they are not sharing the original risk. Okay? They do not incur the cost to acquire the original risk. That is why it will save a lot when it comes to administration, acquisition costs, and so on. Okay? Because cost is only incurred when there is claim. When there is a claim, 
cost will be incurred by both insurer and the reinsurer. Otherwise, they're going to be less costly. Number two, improve net retain position. This will improve insurer net retain position. So, so what does it mean by that? So let's say, okay, okay. Improve net retention of the insurer. Example, we have a proportional reinsurance arrangement. Insurer will retain one risk up to 10,000 ringgit and they have a surplus reinsurance capacity of five lines which equal to 50,000. And let's say there is a sum insured, the risk we have a sum insured of 30,000. So if we allocate this 30,000 based on the arrangement, insurer net retention is going to be 10,000 per risk and the balance 20,000 goes to the surplus reinsurer. So what happened is, insurer would like to improve their net retention of this 10,000 for that particular risk. What, but what can they do with that is to arrange an excess of loss cover just to protect this 10,000 ringgit retention. By doing how? By arranging a cover of 6,000 in excess of 4,000. So the total of this will equal to their net retention under proportional reinsurance. So they reduce their retention or they improve their retention from 10,000 down to 4,000. Sorry, not 40,000. 4,000. So this will improve their net retained position. Number three, ability to reinsure to retain more premium. Okay, uh, they are retaining more premium because they don't have to pay for. Because they don't, they are not sharing the risk. They are retaining more original gross premium from the original contract. So they are, they have more ability to use reinsurance because they know that they are not sharing the original premium. Okay. Advantage number four, easier to increase capacity by using excess of loss. Reinsurance will expect less balance on higher layers, so EML failure can be protected. Okay, I will continue this point in the next slide.